When it comes to the control design of HVAC systems and the evaluation of their real-world performance, people tend to combine the dynamic models of HVAC systems with the building energy simulation to predict the system dynamics. However, this approach usually uses the lumped capacitance method to predict the thermal behavior of the building thermal elements and often neglects non-uniform airflow dynamics in buildings and assumes the indoor air is well mixed, which could potentially lead to erroneous prediction for the system dynamics. In order to understand how accurate the approach that everybody uses is, we developed a co-simulation platform that couples the detailed refrigeration cycle and the building envelope simulations with the CFD airflow simulations, so that we can model the dynamic interactions between HVAC equipment, building envelope, indoor airflow, and the feedback control. With the CFD simulation, non-uniform airflow dynamics can be captured and a more accurate heat transfer prediction can be obtained. Now we can compare the performance of a simulation with the well-mixed air assumption that everybody uses with the code simulation that we developed to understand the differences between these two so that we do better control design and the system can have a better thermal performance. We simulated the pull-down performance of a room air conditioner under different fan speeds. It turns out the system dynamics with the lumped parameter model of the room are very much different from those with the much more accurate CFD model of the room. With the well-mixed air assumption, the simulation shows that high fan speed pulls down the room temperature faster than the low fan speed. This seems consistent with our expectation. However, with the CFD airflow model, the simulation shows the opposite. This is very counterintuitive, but our data does support the co-simulation results. This is because the indoor airflow is more well-mixed and turbulent with high fan speed and pulls more heat out of the walls into the room. But this augmented heat load cannot be offset by the increased cooling capacity delivered by the air conditioner due to an increase in airflow speed. We can also look at the animations that show the airflow and the temperature field on the central plane of the room while the air conditioner is in the pull-down operation so that we can better understand how airflow movement can affect the thermal behavior of the system. The animation on the left is for the low-speed airflow case and the animation on the right is for the high-speed airflow case. The blue arrows represent airflow direction while different colors represent different air temperatures. The air comes into the room through the supply vent and the leaves through the return vent because the airflow dynamics will affect the operation of the air conditioner. We need to feed the cycle models with the return air state and update the supply air state during the co simulation. In the animations, you can see the air temperatures are not uniform. Also, because of the jet flow, there are two vortices forming in both cases. In the high-speed airflow case, there is more air entrainment around the vortex in the right corner because the air velocity is higher. While in the low-speed airflow case, a lot of air just bypasses the vortex in the right corner and then leaves. So we can see the high fan speed results in more air mixing. And heat transfer between indoor air and the building walls is enhanced accordingly, causing longer pull-down time. Without co-simulation, this complex heat transfer and the fluid flow phenomena cannot be observed. 